and welcome to Build. I'm Simon Atkins. As ever, we're coming to you live from London for our last show of the week. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by two of the stars of ITV's The Daryls. Here to talk about the latest and last series, please welcome Daisy Waterhouse and Callum Woodhouse. Waterstone, should I say. Hi, guys. Welcome to Build. How are you? Good, thanks. Good, nice thank to see you. you. Great, nice. To, we're looking forward to talking about the last series. But first, if you guys want to get involved at home and ask the guys a question, you absolutely can. You can tweet us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so, please. how are you guys feeling about the last series of The Daryls? <laughs> so, I wasn't say it all. <laughs> oh, I know, but we've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been, oh, it's been four so. series, but this is the final one. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about it? I feel very moved and emotional by it. I think, you know, it, these four years have gone so quickly. Yeah. And it's bizarre that it's ending now, but I feel like it's ending on a good note. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a natural end, but yeah, it's obviously like we yeah, having to say bye and like just spending time with like people that we love every day. And, like, yeah, it's going to be weird not seeing each other every day. Yeah. But well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, just let's talk about where we're picking up from series three. Mm -hmm. So, can you give us just a quick roundup of what you guys, have been up, your characters, were up to in series three and where we're picking up from? You go first. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> Leslie obviously suffered a bit of heartbreak at the end of series three. Yeah. So we're sort of picking up with him uh, in series four. He's sort of reverted back to his more basic self from like series one he's like hunting and doing sort of manual labor again but he's sort of doing it all with like the weight of this sort of like heartbreak that he's been through so it's sort of like he's he's gone back to what he's doing from series one but it's sort of with this like sort of new maturity there and there's like the guest house now is in is in full swing so he's just trying to help out his mom there and what's going on with margo so what what happened um where did she leave off in series three so at the end of series three, Margot has to say goodbye to Zoltan, the love of her life, um, who goes back to Turkey. And we find her at the beginning of season four feeling very lost and feeling sort of like she's outgrown her family and uh, feels like she wants to explore life a bit more and grow up a bit. And series four kicks off on Sunday. What can we expect from this series? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'll go. Well, I think, to be honest, I think this is our best, and th there's a lot more going on. I <laughs> okay. think I think it's the funniest yeah. that we've done. Actually, there's a lot of uh, physical comedy we've yeah. got in, and um, and there's a lot more colour to it. And I think, I think you know, there's a lot of parallels with Brexit part of it because this is set in 1939, and the Nazis are invading, and so everyone kind of has to get out of there. Sure. And it's interesting how it's kind of fallen on Brexit season, and yeah. which, you know, which is yeah. bizarre. And I yeah. think people are going to really relate to a lot of the stuff that's going on in this series, which is, yeah. yeah. Well, let's take a look at a clip of uh, what's to come. The Daryls! <laughs> <laughs> so you play Leslie, and he gets a bit broody, doesn't he, in this series? What can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think he sort of still feels... Wait, so you've got, like, a hair. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Des. Yeah, I think he still feels slightly sort of robbed from last season. He was, I think he'd sort of really prepared himself to be a dad type of thing. Uh, obviously, that didn't work out. Um, so, yeah, there's an episode in this one where he goes out hunting uh, and has to sort of mind a baby all day. And I think that just sort of completely knocks any type of broodiness out of him very quickly. Yeah. Um, and so there was a lot of babies on set yeah. for this. And how did you get on with all the, the kids? I mean, I thought I thought they hated me. I thought they absolutely hated me, um, and got like really down because like they just, the parents would hand me the baby and they would just start crying. I was just like, oh my god! And then that was it was mainly just me and Corfu with the babies. And then when we were back in Twickenham, um, other people had scenes with the babies and they would just be crying for everyone. And I realised it wasn't just me. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> they just hated being on set, I think. <laughs> but yeah. did you kind of, like, relax? In, in, oh, by in, the yeah. end, yeah. I, I think I'd made friends with... with um, there was one in particular, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd made friends. He was, uh, yeah, he was on my side by the end. And where does Margot find herself at the beginning of this series? Well, like I said, I think she's feeling very lost and she decides... Margot always starts her own obsessions and she has new things that, and she, she kind of loves failing and I think she has like big enjoyment out of it. So she decides she wants to set up a hair and beauty salon. Right, how does that go? Margot being Margot doesn't go very well. 
Um, but, um, you know, there's she's got a lot to learn this year and, you know, and she really does mature a lot. And it was really fun going on that journey because I'm a very immature 24-year-old. So it was quite interesting kind of being with someone widening their eyes at the world and I felt like it really opened my eyes a lot as well which is quite fun and she um she finds an unexpected housemate in the Theo doesn't yes. she tell us tell us about that well Margaret and Theo are very different people and very yeah. opposite they did they get along very very well they're very good friends and Theo is very OCD and wants everything in order whereas Margot is a lot more carefree and kind of enjoys colors and pictures and mess and feels creative in those kind of environments and doesn't work out the best for the two of them she grows quite a lot doesn't she in this fourth and final series she heads off to uh, the UK for a bit. Yes, she Just does. tell us about, like, you know, how, uh, how, what she learns from from that. Well, well, the reason why Margot goes to the UK is she feels like she hasn't been there since she was fifteen years old, and she kind of feels like she doesn't know if she misses it or not, and she decides it's the best idea for her to do that if she's feeling lost in Corfu. She's like, well, maybe I'll go home and see what it's like there. And she ends up staying with Jeffrey and Prue, um, her aunt and uncle, who are aren't the best yeah. to, to live with yeah. and they're all very different they and they're all the f- funniest double yeah. act of all time them two. <laughs> yeah and they're very bemused by her for most of it and she ends up becoming a governess um and learns a lot about that and about being mature and being responsible which she's never done before there's lots of banter isn't there between the siblings what's the kind of relationship dynamic uh, with the siblings yeah what, in, with, in, with you in real life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, well, we're all siblings, that's the thing. Yeah. We're, we, me and Cal, we said we're like twins, you know, and we've never had, we don't have a twin. But. Yeah, we do really feel like actual siblings now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we have to talk about Corfu because obviously, you know, you guys have spent so long yeah. filming out it's there. It's like our second home now. It's like. Mm. So, what has that experience been like? And, um, it was, so you, you must have made loads of friends out there, and the locals must know you quite oh, well. God, yeah, all the we best love friends. the locals. Yeah. They're just brilliant. The most hospitable people ever, aren't they? They've been so they? kind so to nice. us the last four years. They really have, and mm. we've made so many friends out there. And, you know, it's just the loveliest place. It really is, and they're so welcoming. And yeah. you know, We're what? already planning our, like, holiday. I was yeah. just going to say, do you think you'll, you'll oh, end up going back? Yeah, yeah. Really? I'm never Well, it'd be stop stupid going. not to, because we, we know all the best places to go now. Yeah, and we also know all the owners of all the bars and the restaurants and stuff so of course so, we're gonna come so presumably do you get a lot of, t- of downtime when you're filming or is the schedule quite hectic or do you get time to explore the island have your friends come over well i mean this year is the only time i really had time off because i'm in it a little bit less because i go to uk obviously um so um my boyfriend came out this year as well which is really nice and we kind of rented a car and traveled around the island and i've never done that before like i never got the chance to in the other three years because i was working every day so it's really nice to kind of just see everything properly and and feel so much more at home, like knowing I've been here for so long and it's kind of like my soil and I, I get it and yeah. I get the area and everything. Um, the series has been described as as pitch perfect escapism. Mm. If you had to describe it in three words, this is a, quite a tough question. What what would are three uh, words? What would they be? So what was that? I would choose so, that one. What the pitch? pitch. Perfect escape. Yeah, Pitch perfect how, escapism. Is how the series has been described. Uh, I don't understand. And, and <laughs> so, 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 Sorry. so, so, the series and Corfu has been described as pitch perfect escapism. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. How would you describe it if you had to in three words? Just uh, your your the, the the series. I think vibrant, eccentric, and warm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> come on, you need to, you need to come up with three words. Oh God! Uh, Think of your whole experience out there. Animals. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Animals, Daisy, son. <laughs> we have to talk about the animals because you weren't. You're not exactly. Or you have been that that au fait with animals when you were kind of like on set. But you, um, and you, there's a few, a few you know hilarious experiences that you've had. How do you? How, how are you around animals now? I feel a lot more comfortable now around animals. I feel like I kind of understand that you never know what they're going to do next, and I love that about them. <laughs> it's, it's exciting. Um, and Keely Hawes is, of course, reprises the role of uh, the matriarch Louisa mm-hmm. um, in this series. Um, what is it like working with her? 
She's just a dream, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, look at her. She's I cried when I found she's out so she sweet. got nominated for two BAFTAs. I know, that's amazing, yeah. Like, she's been nominated wow. for in two different categories for supporting and leading, and I burst into tears. I was like... like so you, deserved, though. She's yeah, she just does, she's just a powerhouse of a lady. She mm. really is. She, She's a tough gal. It's a, yeah, it's a massive privilege to be able to like work yeah. with someone. Yeah. Especially because well, we're young as well and we have mm. someone like that to look up to and aspire to, to be. Yeah, yeah. Really. And, you know, it's, it's and she's really thing. taken us under uh, uh, her wing as well ever since Series 1. Mm. From the and, beginning like, the of Series well. 1, yeah. yeah. Do you learn a lot from these people when you're kind of like working them? Does she give you any kind of yeah, like, 100%. you know, life tips or like acting tips that you'd like to? All yeah, the time, but nice. never in like a pushy way. Right. She yeah, never, it's never just, condescending. Yeah. No, it, it's always very helpful. Just um, sort of technical things like how to like hit marks and mm. like cheat eye lines and things like that. Stuff that we'd never really know. She's yeah. just like, yeah. it's like, you know, just telling you how to do it. But yeah, not at all like looking down on you or anything like that. Um, so, the final episode, the final script, what was it like reading that for the first time? It made me cry. <laughs> yeah. It didn't make you cry. So, wh- so really where were you when you read it? it. Where were my, you when you read it? I was in the hotel room in Corfu and I got sent it. And I think I started it at like 11 in the morning. Right. And then finished it by like 9 on the night because I managed to read like 6 pages. Because you then can I'd get like through fill it. Up and then I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I'll read it later and then oh. I'll, I'd start it again later and within like four pages I'd be off again and it sort of took me like 11 hours to like get through it. I was so excited to read it. So yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is it, this is it. And then by the last page, I literally just closed it and was like... Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and just could not stop oh. crying. I'm, quite, I'm tearing up a bit now. It's, yeah, it was, it's really like only because it was just like so good though as well, like... As well as it being the last one, it was just like it felt like the perfect end, you know. Mm. And what's the what was the feeling on set for the last series? Was it a very different feeling to to the other three? It was really different because obviously this series, like people sort of go their own way. Like obviously Daisy was in England filming a lot. Um, Josh Josh's character Larry's in sort of Paris and then. Mm. different part of Greece so we were all a bit sort of more spread out so it was very very different to the others but every time like all of us were on set at the same time it was just like amazing yeah. we just have the best time all of us yeah. together we really do it's like being at school like it, it we just like laugh and cry and yeah. just have a ball and it's going to be weird that that's not going to happen anymore. Mm. And all the scenes, like especially like the dinner scenes, we just laugh and laugh and laugh and talk about rubbish. And, <laughs> you know, it's just the, it's so much. And we also work. We also do yeah, our work. I'm sure you've been in lots of hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you guys do anything to celebrate, to kind of, you know, to, 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 to see off the series? I mean, we I had, heard it was we had a party, at, like a rap party at the end. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I think hopefully we'll do something when like episode six. Yeah, is, I like, think we're all gonna get together when out, the hopefully. last one airs. But was there was there a big meal or something over in Corfu? Was there not jump to nine? There was we've had a f- we had a few of those. A yeah. few when people were departing, we there was a night at the villa as well. We'd never we've never like sort of done anything at the villa on a night and. Um, production hired like this band to play like loads nice. of like, Greek songs that had been like throughout the series, which was amazing. Do you think that so you guys have you know you've played these characters for ages? Mm. Have you taken have you have you learned anything um, from your characters and have you taken away anything yeah. um, from your characters that you've brought into your like your own lives? Yeah, I feel like for me, Margot's just the type of person who doesn't mind failure and keeps going, keeps having a bash at life. And in a positive way, and how failure is can be positive, and I've really taken that from her, and I think that's made me so much of a more excitable person and more hungry. I think you know for life, for the zest of life, and she's really installed that into me. What about you? Yeah, proper gun maintenance. <laughs> so, <it was> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, like as Leslie, though, I've learned like a bunch of skills that I can now like put on my CV. Like in series two, I had to like milk milk that goat. Oh yeah. <laughs> I to, yeah, I know how to butcher and skin a rabbit. That was from series one. That got cut. Um, but yeah, like I've learned like loads of just like practical, obviously Leslie, practical skills that I can. Yeah, I learned how to sail for this series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, so you've t- that's good. You've taken me lots yeah, of skills, yeah, yeah, skills yeah. from your four years. Um, so you know what's what's next for you guys? Um, you know, is there going to be life after the Daryls? 
hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I'd love to get a job. Someone please hire me. Um, yeah. No, we've, I'm just yeah doing like little bits. Mm. Little bits. Auditions yeah, here, yeah, auditions, auditions there. Auditions, yeah. Trying yeah. to write a bit more as well with friends. and. Yeah, I'm trying to write as well. Met. Yeah. Well, listen, we look forward to seeing you guys on screen and thank you so much oh, for coming you, in to, to see us at Build. We've loved having you. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Um, you can catch the Durrells on Sunday, the 7th of April at 8pm on ITV. We'll be back next week with Isaac Carew and Talia Storm and so much more here on Build. Um, but for now, give it up one last time for Daisy Waterstone and Callum Woodhouse. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>